Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste. We carry forward our discussion on the conservation laws and in this lecture, we will have a look at the Water Act. When we look at the preamble of the Water Act, we will find that it is a very long preamble. So, it starts as the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, Act No. 6 of 1974 enacted on 23rd of March 1974 an act to provide for the prevention and control of water pollution and the maintaining or restoring of wholesomeness of water for the establishment with a view to carrying out the purposes aforesaid of boards for the prevention and control of water pollution, for conferring on and assigning to such boards powers and functions relating hereto and for matters connected therewith. So, why was this act enacted? Because it wanted to maintain and restore the wholesomeness of water. And for doing that, it wanted to set up boards and it wanted to assign certain powers and functions to those boards. Whereas it is expedient to provide for the prevention and control of water pollution and the maintaining or restoring of wholesomeness of water for the establishment with a view to carrying out the purposes aforesaid of boards for the prevention and control of water pollution and conferring on and assigning to such boards powers and functions relating thereto. So, this is basically a repetition of what was said before and whereas parliament has no power to make laws for the states with respect to any of the matters aforesaid except as provided in articles 249 and 250 of the constitution. So, here the preamble is stating that parliament does not have power to make laws on these subjects except as provided. And whereas in pursuance of clause 1 of article 252 of the constitution, resolutions have been passed by all the houses of the legislatures of the states of Assam, Bihar, Gujarat, Haryana and so on to the effect that the matters aforesaid should be regulated in those states by parliament by law. So, it is referring to clause 1 of article 252. Now, what does clause 1 of article 252 of the constitution say? It says that when two or more states consider that on a certain subject that does not belong to the union list or the concurrent list the central government should be making a law. So, those states can pass resolutions. Now, these resolutions have to be passed in all in one or both the houses of uh, the legislatures of those states as are applicable. And when two or more states pass such resolutions in all their houses, then the parliament becomes competent to make laws, but then those laws will only be applicable to those states that had asked for it. And this is what the preamble is referring to here. So, it is kind of justifying how the parliament got this power to legislate on the subject which is which it does not ordinarily have the power of. So, whereas all, all, all the houses of the legislatures of so many different states, so it is more than two states, have passed to the effect that the matters aforesaid should be regulated in those states, so only in those states that have passed it. So, by parliament by law, be it enacted by parliament in the 25th year of the Republic of India as follows. So, this is the preamble. If you look at the arrangement of sections in this act, it has chapter 1 preliminary, short title, application and commencement. Now, normally we uh, the first section is short title extent and commencement, but in this case it is not extent its application because only those states that agree to it will be able to apply this act. 
section 2 as always is definitions. Then chapter 2 talks about the central and state boards for prevention and control of water pollution. So we have seen before that in the preamble as well, the act states that it wants to create these boards. So chapter 2 is directly moving to the creation of these boards at the central level as well as the state level. So constitution of central boards, constitution of state board, terms and conditions of service of members, disqualifications, vacation of seats by members, meetings of board, constitution of committees, temporary association of persons with board for particular purposes, vacancy in board not to invalidate acts or proceedings, delegation of powers to the chairman, member secretary and officers and other employees of the board. So this chapter is talking about the central board and the state board. Then chapter 3 talks about joint boards between two or more states. So constitution of joint board, composition of joint boards and special provision relating to giving of directions. Because in the case of joint boards, there will be two or more state governments involved. So if they give a direction, then Will that direction be applicable everywhere or only to that particular state? Then chapter 4 talks about powers and functions of the boards. And here as well in the preamble we saw that the act wants to give the boards these powers and functions so as to enable these boards to perform these activities. So this chapter deals with functions of the central board, functions of the state board and power to give directions. Then chapter 5 deals with prevention and control of water pollution, power of state government to restrict the application of act to certain areas. So because the state government by its has itself asked the parliament to make this law, it is giving the power to the state government to restrict the application of this act to certain areas. Then power to obtain information, power to take samples of effluents and procedure to be followed reports of results of analysis on samples taken under section 21, power of entry and inspection because if you want to take samples, if you want to regulate things, you will have to enter the premises, you will have to inspect things if the industries or other bodies are doing things properly or not. So it is giving the power of entry and inspection. Prohibition on use of stream or well for disposal of polluting matter, etc. <coughs> Restrictions on new outlets and new discharges, provision regarding existing discharge of sewage or trade effluent, refusal or withdrawal of consent by the state board, appeals, revision, power of state board to carry out certain works, furnishing of information to the state board and other agencies in certain cases, emergency measures in case of pollution of stream or well. So if pollution has already happened, so there has to be certain emergency measures power of board to make application to courts for restraining apprehended po pollution of water in streams or wells, power to give directions, appeal to the NGT. Then chapter 6 talks about funds, accounts and audit, contributions by central government. So the central government makes contributions to the central board. The state government makes contributions to the state board. And so it talks about the fund of the central board and fund of the state board. Then the boards also have bar borrowing powers. They have a budget, there is an annual report that has to be submitted and because we have funds, so these funds are subject to accounts and audit. Then chapter 7 deals with penalties and procedure, failure to comply with directions under subsection 2 or subsection 3 of section 20 or orders issued under clause C of subsection 1 of section 32. So basically if the act has given powers to give directions and if somebody is not following these directions, so the act is prescribing a punishment for that. So it is defining offenses and it is prescribing punishments for them. So there are substantive provisions in this act. But at the same time, we have also seen that it is also dealing with a large number of procedures. So there is also a big procedural aspect to this act. So this act has both substantive and procedural aspects. Penalty for certain acts, penalty for contravention of provisions of section 24, penalty for contravention of section 25 or 26, enhanced penalty after previous conviction, penalty for contravention of certain provisions of the act, publication of names of offenders, 
offenses by companies, offenses by government departments, cognizance of offenses, members, officers and servants of the board to be public servants and then chapter 8 deals with miscellaneous provisions. Talks about central water laboratory, state water laboratory, analysts, reports of analysts, local authorities to assist, compulsory acquisition of land for the state board, returns and reports, bar of jurisdiction, protection of action taken in good faith, overriding effect, power of central government to supersede the central board and the joint boards, followed by power of state government to supersede the state board, power of central government to make rules and power of state government to make rules. Now, basically, when we look at this act, we find that a large number of provisions are very similar to what we have seen earlier in the case of the Environment Protection Act. Now, bear in mind that the Environment Protection Act had come after the Water Act. The Water Act is a precursor and basically all of these provisions were uh, refined out with time and then they were incorporated in the Environment Protection Act. So, we have looked at Environment Protection Act before so that we have a much better understanding of what these provisions are trying to do. And then we will also look at the provisions here. So, let us begin with chapter 1 preliminary, short title and commencement. This act may be called the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. It applies in the first instance to the whole of the states of Assam, Bihar and all of these states and union territories and it shall apply to such other state which adopts this act by resolution passed in that behalf under clause 1 of article 252 of the constitution. So, in the first instance, it is applicable to all of these states and also to the union territories. But later on, it can, it will also apply to any other state that adopts this act by a resolution passed in this behalf under clause 1 of article 252 of the constitution. So, these are the states that had uh, asked the central government to make this act. So, it is applicable in the first instance there. It shall come into force at once in the states of Assam, Bihar and so on and in the union territories. So, basically when does this act commence? It shall come into force at once, meaning that as soon as this act uh, receives the assent of the president and it gets notified, it has come into force in all of these states that had asked for it and in the union territories. And in any other state which adopts this act under clause 1 of article 252 of the constitution on the date of such adoption and any reference to this act uh, in this act to the commencement of this act shall in relation to any state or union territory mean the date on which this act comes into force in such state or union territory. So, for the states that had asked for it, it has come into effect at once. In the union territories, it has come into effect at once. And in the other states, it shall come into effect on that day on which uh, they have passed the, uh, the resolution, where they have adopted this act. Then section 2 deals with definitions. In this act, unless the context otherwise requires, board means the central board or a state board. Central board means the central pollution control board constituted under section 3. So, central pollution control board, in short, we call it the CPCB. So, central board is the CPCB. Member means a member of a board and includes the chairman. Occupier in relation to any factory or premises means the person who has control over the affairs of the factory or the premises and includes in relation to any substance the person in possession of the substance. Outlet includes any con conduit pipe or channel, open or closed, carrying sewage or trade effluent or any other holding arrangement which causes or is likely to cause pollution. Pollution means such contamination of water or such alteration of the physical, chemical or biological properties of water or such discharge of any sewage or trade effluent or of any other liquid, gaseous or solid substance into water, whether directly or indirectly as may or is likely to 
क्रिएट अ न्यूसेंस और रेंडर सच वाटर हार्मफुल और इंजूरियस टू पब्लिक हेल्थ और सेफ्टी और टू डोमेस्टिक कमर्शियल इंडस्ट्रियल एग्रीकल्चरल और अदर लेजिटिमेट यूजेस और टू द लाइफ एंड हेल्थ ऑफ एनिमल्स एंड प्लांट्स और ऑफ एक्वेटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स सो यू विल नोटिस हियर दैट इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ दिस एक्ट द पोल्यूशन इज ओनली रेफरिंग टू पोल्यूशन ऑफ वाटर एंड वाटर बॉडीज इट इज नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी पोल्यूशन ऑफ एयर इट इज नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी अदर काइंड ऑफ पोल्यूशन एवरीथिंग इज बींग डिफाइंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ वाटर पोल्यूशन प्रिस्क्राइब मीन्स प्रिस्क्राइब बाई रूल्स मेड अंडर दिस एक्ट बाई द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और एज द केस मे बी द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सीवेज एफ्लुएंट मीन्स एफ्लुएंट फ्रॉम एनी सीवरेज सिस्टम और सीवेज डिस्पोजल वर्क एंड इंक्लूड्स सलेज फ्रॉम ओपन ड्रेन्स सीवर मीन्स एनी कॉन्ड्यूट पाइप और चैनल ओपन और क्लोज कैरिंग सीवेज और ट्रेड एफ्लुएंट सो इवन इफ इट इज नॉट कैरिंग सीवेज इट इज कैरिंग ओनली अ ट्रेड एफ्लुएंट देन टू विल कॉल इट अ सीवेर स्टेट बोर्ड मीन्स स्टेट पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड state government in relation to a union territory means the administrator thereof appointed under article 239 of the constitution stream includes river water course whether it's flowing or for the time being it is dry inland water whether it's natural or artificial subterranean waters that is underground waters so here we are also talking about ground water so sub is below and terra is ground So this is below ground waters sea or tidal waters to such extent as the case may be to such point as the state government may by notification in the official gazette specify in this behalf and trade effluent includes any liquid gaseous or solid substance which is discharged from any premises used for carrying on any industry operation or process or treatment and disposal system other than domestic sewage meaning that when we talk about any industrial discharges any industrial waste products or effluents that are um, discharged into water bodies all of them are coming under this term similarly all the waste waters that are getting generated when the waste are getting treated so they all come under this definition of trade effluent in chapter 2 talks about the central and state boards for prevention and control of water pollution constitution of central board the central government shall with effect from such date being a date not later than 6 months from the commencement of this act in these states as it may by notification in the official gazette appoint constitute a central board to be called the cpcb to exercise the powers conferred on and perform the functions assigned to that board under this act now the cp uh, the central board shall consist of the following members a full time chairman being a person having special knowledge or, per, or practical experience in respect of matters relating to environmental protection or a person having knowledge and experience in administering institutions dealing with the matters aforesaid to be nominated by the central government such number of officials not exceeding 5 to be nominated by the central government to represent that government such number of persons not exceeding 5 to be nominated by the central government from amongst the members of the state boards of whom not exceeding 2 shall be from those referred to in clause c of subsection 2 of section 4 such number of non officials non officials means non government employees not exceeding 3 to be nominated by the central government to represent the interests of agriculture fishery or industry or trade or any other interests which in the opinion of the central government ought to be represented because we are talking about water pollution and a large quantum of water pollution is being done because of agriculture fishery industry and trade and so people from these industries or these occupations also have to be there in the board two persons to represent the companies or corporations owned controlled and managed by the central government to be nominated by that government a full time member secretary possessing qualifications knowledge and experience of scientific engineering or management aspects of pollution control to be appointed by the central government and the central uh, board shall be a body corporate with the name aforesaid 
having perpetual succession and a common seal with power subject to the provisions of this act to acquire, hold and dispose of property and to contract and may by the aforesaid name sue or be sued. So basically what we are observing here is that the central board is comprising of a large number of people from several different domains. So it is including the representatives of those occupations that are resulting in water pollution. It is including representatives of industries. It is including expert members who have a specific knowledge of these aspects. It is including members from the state boards and so on. So why are we bringing all these people together to make use of their expertise and to ensure that water pollution does not happen and if it happens then it is quickly controlled. So this is the central board and similar to the central board we also have a state board. Now the state board is made by the state government. The state government shall with effect from such date as it may by notification in the official gazette appoint constitute a state pollution control board under such name as may be specified in the notification to exercise the powers conferred on and perform the functions assigned to that board under this act. And here as well we have a large number of members. Other things are very similar. Provided that in relation to any union territory the central board may delegate all or any of its powers and functions under this subsection to such person or body of persons as the central government may specify. So in the case of union territory the central board or the central pollution control board can delegate all of its powers or some of its powers. Similarly all of its functions or some of its functions under this subsection to such person or body of persons as the central government may specify. Then section 5 talks about the term and conditions of service. So people hold their post for a period of 3 years that is important and then people can also get disqualified. So no, mem no person shall be a member of a board who is or at any time has been adjusted insolvent or has suspended payment of his debts or has compounded with his creditors. Now why is that important because a person who is insolvent and is unable to pay his debts is probably in a position where he or she can be pressurized by vested interests to take certain decisions and so the act disqualifies this person to be a member of the board or is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a competent court or uh, is or has been convicted of an offence which in the opinion of the central government or as the case may be of the state government involves moral turpitude or is or at any time has been convicted of an offence under this act because in that case there again will be a conflict of interest. A person who has been convicted of an offence under this act should not be a member of any of the boards. Has directly or indirectly by himself or any partner any share or interest in any firm or company carrying on the business of manufacture, sale or hire or machinery, plant, equipment, apparatus or fittings for the treatment of sewage or trade effluents. Now why is that important? It is be important because as we have seen before in the case of natural justice, you cannot be a judge in your own cause. Nemo judex in causa sua. So if there is a person who has interest in water treatment or sewage treatment operations because of his monetary interest in a company or a firm that is providing these equipments then that person should not be a member of the board because the decisions that he or she is taking it might be considered that those decisions were made because of this vested interest. So that also leads to disqualification or is a director or a secretary manager or other salaried officer or employee of any company or firm having any contract with the board or with the government constituting the board or with a local authority in the state or with a company or corporation owned, controlled and managed by the government for carrying out of sewerage schemes or for the installation of plants for the treatment of sewage or trade effluents. Here also it is the same thing. Or 
has so abused in the opinion of the central government or as the case may be of the state government his position as a member as to render his continuance on the board detrimental to the interest of the general public then it further moves and says that no order of removal shall be made by the central government or the state government as the case may be under this section unless the member concerned has been given a reasonable opportunity of showing cause against the same why do we have this particular subsection here again we are talking about natural justice so no person should be condemned unheard or the alterum partum you have to hear the other party so before removing any person before disqualifying any person the person has to be given an opportunity to present his case so here it is saying that the person has to be given a reasonable opportunity of showing cause against this order of removal and notwithstanding anything contained in subsections 1 and 7 of section 5 a member who has been removed under this section shall not be eligible for renomination as a member so once you have been removed you cannot become a member again then we have vacation of seats by members meetings of the board the board has to meet at least once every 3 months and has to observe such rules of procedure as may be prescribed then there is an option of constituting committees a board may constitute as many committees consisting wholly of members or wholly of other persons or partly of members and partly of other persons and for such purpose or purposes as as it may think fit so the board has the power to make committees these committees will meet at such time and place and observe such rules as may be prescribed and the members of the committee other than members of the board shall be paid fees and allowances for attending the meetings and any other works temporary association of persons with board for particular purposes a board may associate with itself in such manner and for such purposes as may be prescribed any person whose assistance or advice it may desire to obtain in performing any of the functions under this act so the board has been given pretty wide powers it can make committees it can ask any other person to get associated with it any person whose assistance is required can be asked to become Uh, associated with the board then vacancy in board not to invalidate acts or proceedings delegation of powers to chairman the chairman of a board shall exercise such powers and perform such duties as may be prescribed or as may from time to time be delegated to him by the board so the board also has the power to delegate its powers to the chairman then member secretary and officers and other employees of the board and so on then chapter 3 deals with joint boards what is a joint board not withstanding anything contained in this act an agreement may be entered into by two or more governments of contiguous states so these states must share a boundary they must be next to each other and two or more governments can uh, enter into an agreement to make a joint board in place of having individual boards or by the central government and one or more governments of states contiguous to such union territory or union territories to be in force for such period and to be subject to renewal for such further period if any as may be specified in the agreement to provide for the constitution of a joint board so joint boards can also be made then it talks about the composition of these joint boards so uh, in these boards you will have representatives of both the states and special provision relating to giving of directions not withstanding anything contained in this act where any joint board is constituted under section 13 the government of the state for which the joint board is constituted is competent to give any direction under this act only in cases where such direction relates to a matter within the exclusive territorial jurisdiction of the state so a state cannot do this that it asks the government or it asks the other government to make a joint board 
and then it gives a direction to the join board that in the other state you should do such and such things. No, that cannot be done. It can only give directions to those matters as are applicable within the exclusive territorial jurisdiction of the state that is giving you the directions. And the central government alone shall be competent to give any direction under this act where such direction relates to a matter within the territorial jurisdiction of two or more states or pertaining to a union territory. So in these cases, only the central government will give a direction. Then chapter 4, powers and functions of the board. Here we have functions of the central board. Subject to the provisions of this act, the main function of the central board shall be to promote cleanliness of streams and wells in different areas of the states. So the main function is to promote cleanliness. In particular and without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing function, the central board may perform all or any of the following functions. Namely, advise the central government on any matter concerning the prevention and control of water pollution. So it has an advisory role. Then it also coordinates things. It coordinates the activities of the state boards and resolve disputes among them. Provide technical assistance and guidance to the state boards. Carry out and sponsor investigations and research relating to problems of water pollution and prevention, control or abatement of water pollution. Plan and organize the training of persons engaged or to be engaged in programs for the same thing. Organize through mass media a comprehensive program regarding the prevention and control of water pollution. Perform such of the functions of any state board as may be specified in an order made under subsection 2 of section 18. Then collect, compile and publish technical and statistical data relating to water pollution and measures devised for its effective prevention and control. Prepare manuals, codes, guides relating to the treatment and disposal of sewage and trade effluents and disseminate the information connected therewith. Lay down, modify or annul in consultation with the state governments concerned the standards for a stream or a well. Plan and cause to be executed a nationwide program for the prevention, control and abatement of water pollution. Perform such other functions as may be prescribed. Plus, the board may establish or recognize a laboratory or laboratories to enable the board to perform its functions under this section efficiently including the analysis of samples of water from any stream or well or of samples of any sewage or trade effluents. So basically, the board has a very large domain. It can work on each and every area of water pollution. So it can work on technical aspects, it can work on publications, it can work on mass awareness, it can uh, devise codes, it can devise standards to be followed, it can recognize laboratories, it can set up laboratories and so on. So the main purpose is to ensure the cleanliness of water and for that the board has several powers, several functions. And similarly, the act talks about the functions of the state board. Here as well, we have very detailed provisions. Then we have power to give directions. In performance of its functions under this act, the central board shall be bound by such directions in writing as the central government may give to it. And every state board shall be bound by such directions in writing as the central board or the state government may give to it. Meaning that the central board is to work under the directions given by the central government, but the state board does not only have to work under the directions of the state government, but also under the directions of the central pollution control board. Provided that where a direction given by the state government is inconsistent with the direction given by the central board, the matter shall be referred to the central government for its decision. And where the central government is of the opinion that any state board has defaulted in complying with any directions given by the central board under subsection 1 and as a result of such default, a grave emergency has arisen and it is necessary or expedient to do so in public interest, it may by order direct the central board to perform any of the functions of the state board in relation to such area for such period and for such purposes as may be specified. So, if the central government is feeling that the state government is not following the directions of the central board, the, the central government can authorize the central board to 
work on all the powers and functions that are given to the state board. And where the central board performs any of these uh, functions, then it can recover the expenses together with interest. So, it, it will not be doing anything for free, it will be recovering all those expenses together with interest. Then chapter 5 deals with prevention and control of water pollution. Power of state government to restrict the application of act to, to certain areas. So, the state government is empowered to restrict the application of this act to certain areas. Notwithstanding anything contained in this act, if the state government after consultation with or on the recommendation of the state board is of opinion that the provisions of this act need not apply to the entire state, it may by notification in the official gazette restrict the application of this act to such area or areas as may be declared therein as water pollution prevention and control area or areas. And thereupon the provisions of this act shall apply only to such area or areas. So, the state government can notify area or areas by the name of water pollution prevention and control area or areas. And if it does so, then the water act will only apply to such areas, not everywhere in the state. Now, each water pollution prevention and control area may be declared either by reference to a map or by reference to the line of any watershed or the boundary of any district or partly by one method and partly by another. Then there is the power to obtain information. So, the state board can ask for information and it can obtain information. It has the power to take samples of effluents and procedures to be followed therewith. So, in this case, as we have seen in the case of the Environment Protection Act as well, the board has, the state board or the officer empowered by it has the power to take samples of effluents. And how does it do so? As in the case of the EPA, here as well, the result of any analysis of a sample of any sewage or trade effluent shall not be admissible in evidence in any legal proceeding unless the provisions of subsections 3, 4 and 5 are complied with. And what are these provisions? One is that the person has to serve a notice and then collect the sample in the presence of the occupier or, it, or his agent. Then the person has to divide the sample into two parts. Each part has to be placed in a container, sealed and signed and then it has to be sent for testing. However, if the occupier or his agent does not come, if he willfully absents himself, so in that case the officer himself will sign the samples and if uh, the person does not uh, uh, sign, then also the same uh, rule applies. When the notice is served, the person is present but does not make a request for dividing the sample into two parts, then only one sample will be collected and it will not be divided into two parts. Then reports of the result of analysis of samples taken under section 21. So, they, when a sample of any sewage or trade effluent has been sent for analysis to the laboratory established or recognized by the central board or by the state board, then there will be an analysis done and a report submitted. Now, on receipt of the report under subsection 1, one copy of the report shall be sent by the central board or the state board as the case may be to the occupier or his agent and another copy shall be preserved for production before the court. And where a sample has been sent for analysis under clause E of subsection 3 of subsection uh, or uh, subsection 4 of section 21 to any laboratory, the government analyst referred to in that subsection shall analyze the sample and submit a report in the prescribed form of the result of the analysis and triplicate to the central board or to the state board. And if there is any inconsistency or discrepancy or variation in results, the analysis carried out by the laboratory established or recognized by the central board or the state board and that of the laboratory established or uh, specified under section 51 or section 52, the report of the latter shall prevail. 
and any cost incurred in getting any sample analyzed at the request of the occupier or his agent shall be payable by such occupier or his agent and in case of default the same shall be recoverable from him as arrears of land revenue or of public demand so it talks in detail about how samples have to be taken how samples have to be sent to the laboratories how they have to be analyzed how the reports have to be sent and in these cases the reports are sent not just to uh, the court but are also sent to the uh, agent or the occupier then section 23 talks about power of entry and inspection so the officers of the board are having the power to enter any premises and inspect things prohibition on use of stream or well for disposing of uh, polluting matter so you cannot dispose of polluting matter in streams or wells then section 25 talks about restriction on new outlets and new discharges subject to the provision of this section no person shall without the previous consent of the state board establish or take any steps to establish any industry operation or process or any treatment and disposal system or any extension or addition thereto which is likely to discharge sewage or trade effluent into a stream or well or sewer or on land such discharge be, being here and after in this section referred to as discharge of sewage so basically if you want to set up any new polluting industry or if you want to make changes to your industry such that there is a change in the or an addition or an extension into the discharge that is happening you need to take the previous consent of the state board then provision regarding existing discharge of sewage or trade effluent where immediately before the commencement of this act any person was discharging any sewage or trade effluent into a stream or well or sewer or on land the provisions of section 25 shall so far as may be apply in relation to such persons as they apply in relation to the person referred to in that section subject to the modification that the application for consent to be made under subsection 2 of that section shall be made on or before such date as may be specified by the state government by notification in this behalf in the official gazette meaning that if before the commencement of the act there was some person that was already discharging these effluents so what will happen is that it says that every new discharge has to take a prior consent of the uh, board but for those people who have already been doing that for those people there will be a date and by that date they will have to take the consent of the state board and that date will be specified in uh, the official gazette by the state government then refusal or withdrawal of consent by the state board so the state board has the power to refuse giving the consent or withdraw the consent that is already given then there is the provision of appeal and for uh, the appeal there will be an appellate authority that is created by the state government then the state government has the power to revise things power of the state board to carry out certain works so in this case the section is saying that if certain works have to be executed to prevent water pollution the state board is empowered to create those works to carry on those works and then bill the same to the uh, party that was doing the pollution furnishing of information to state board and other agencies in certain cases so if there is any uh, pollution that is going on or it might happen so in that case that industry or operation or process has to furnish information to the board and take necessary actions emergency measures in case of pollution of stream or well when it appears to the uh, state board that any poisonous noxious or polluting matter is present in any stream or well or on land by reason of discharge of such matter in such stream or well or such land or has entered into that stream or well due to any accident or unforeseen act or event and if the board is of the opinion that it is necessary or expedient to take immediate action it may take those actions then power of the board to make application to courts for restraining apprehended pollution 
of water in stream or wells. So the board can also make an application to the courts asking for restraining orders to restrain those people that are doing certain activities that may result in pollution. Then power to give directions. A board may in the exercise of its power and performance of its functions issue any directions in writing to any person, officer or authority and such person, officer or authority is bound to comply. What kind of directions? Direction to close the processes, directions to regulate the processes, direction to stop something. So if the industry does not stop, then it can also ask to stop the supply of electricity, water or other service so that the, the industry has to stop. And then we also have the provision of appeal to the NGT. Then chapter 6 talks about funds, or accounts and audit. So the central government is going to contribute to the central board. The state government is going to contribute to the state board. There will be a fund of the central board. There will be a fund of the state board. The boards will have borrowing powers, they will make their own budget, there will be an annual report that will be submitted and in the case of the central board, it has to be laid before both the houses of the parliament within 9 months from the last date of the previous financial year. And similarly, in the case of the state board, it has to be laid before the state legislature within a period of 9 months from the last date of the previous financial year. So every year this report has to be made within 9 months. Then there is the provision of audit and accounts. Then chapter 7 deals with penalties and procedure. So there are different kinds of penalties that are given. For certain sections there is imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 months and fine which may extend to 10,000 rupees or both. For certain other sections, there is imprisonment of not less than one year and six months, but which may extend to six years and with fine. So for different offenses, we have different penalties that have been uh, prescribed. So this act is defining offenses and it is defining the penalties. So these are the substantive provisions. Penalty for contravention of provision of section 24, here you have shall not be less than one year and six months, but may extend to six years and with fine and so on. Then it also provides for enhanced penalty after previous conviction. If any person who has been convicted of any offence under section 24, 25 or 26 is again found guilty of an offence involving a contravention of the same provision, he shall on the second and every subsequent conviction be punishable with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 2 years, but which may extend to 7 years and with fine. So if the person is a repeat offender, then the penalty is enhanced. Then publication of names of offenders. If any person convicted of an offence under this act commits a like offence afterwards. So here again, the person is a repeated offender. In those cases, it shall be lawful for the court before which the second or subsequent conviction takes place to cause the offender's name and place of residence, the offence and the penalty imposed to be published at the offender's expense. In such newspaper or in such other matter as the court may direct and the expenses of such publication shall be deemed to be part of the cost attending the conviction and shall be recoverable in the same manner as a fine. So this has this unique provision of publication of the names of the offenders. Then in the case of offenses by companies, the head of the company or the director is held liable plus any of the other officers or director, manager, secretary or any other person who was also involved. In the case of government departments, the HOD shall be deemed to be guilty and will be, uh, pro uh, will be proceeded against until and unless he is able to prove that the offence was committed without his knowledge and he had exercised all due diligence to prevent the commission of the offence. So, so the HOD is liable here. Then cognizance of offences, no court shall take cognizance of, uh, uh, of this act uh, except under a complaint made by the board or any officer authorised or any person who has given a notice of not less than 60 days. 
and no court inferior to that of a metropolitan magistrate or a judicial magistrate of the first class shall try an offence punishable under this act. So it has limited the jurisdiction to these courts. Members, officers and servants of the board to be public servants. So all members, officers and servants of a board when acting or purporting to act in pursuance of any of the provisions of this act and the rules made there under shall be deemed to be public servants within the meaning of section 21 of the IPC. Next chapter 8 deals with miscellaneous provisions. So there is a central water laboratory. The central government may by notification in the official gazette establish a central water laboratory or specify any laboratory or institute as a central water laboratory to carry out the functions entrusted to the central water laboratory under this act. And the central government may after consultation with the central board make rules regarding the functions of the central water laboratory, the procedure for the submission to the said laboratory of samples of water or sewage or trade effluent for analysis, the form of the report and the fees payable and such other matters as may be necessary or expedient to enable that laboratory to carry out its functions. So the act also provides for setting up or recognition of a central water laboratory. Similarly, at the state level, there is provision for the state water laboratory. Then it also provides for NLS. So the central government and the state government can appoint government NLS for the purpose of analysis of the samples. Then it talks about uh, the reports of the NLS, any document purporting to be a report signed by a government NLS or as the case may be, a board analyst may be used as evidence of the facts stated therein in proceeding under this act. Then all the local authorities are bound to assist. They shall render such help and assistance and furnish such information to the board as may be required for the discharge of its functions. Compulsory acquisition of land for the state board. So we had seen before that the board is in the form of a body corporate and it can also hold property. Now this uh, section is saying that any land required by a state board for the efficient performance of its functions under this act shall be deemed to be needed for a public purpose and such land shall be acquired for the state board under the provisions of the Land Acquisition Act 1894 or under any other corresponding law for the time being in force. So the state board can acquire property. Then it talks about returns and reports. The central, con uh, the central board shall furnish to the central government and a state board shall furnish to the state government and to the central board such reports, returns, statistics, accounts and other information with respect to its fund or activities as that government or as the case may be the central board may from time to time require. So it has to furnish all these returns and reports. Then we have bar of jurisdiction of courts. No civil court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceeding in respect of any matter which an appellate authority constituted under this act is empowered by or under this act to determine. And no injunction shall be granted by any court or other authority in respect of any action taken or to be taken in pursuance of any power conferred by or under this act. So basically, if a person is feeling aggrieved, he or she has to approach the appellate authority. And if the person approaches not the appellate authority but a court, then this section is saying that the court will not have jurisdiction in this matter. So which means that the appellate authority only has to be uh, approached for these matters. Then section 59 talks about protection of action taken in good faith. No suit or other legal proceedings shall lie against the government or any officer of government or any member or officer of a board in respect of anything which is in good faith done or intended to be done in pursuance of this act or the rules made thereunder. So it protects action that is done in good faith. Overriding effect, the provisions of this act shall have effect notwithstanding anything inconsistent therewith contained in any enactment other than this act. So it's going to override other things if it is not inconsistent. Then we have power of the central government to supersede the central board and joint boards. If at any time the central government is of opinion 
that the central board or any joint board has persistently made default in the performance of the functions imposed on it by or under this act or the or that circumstances exist which render it necessary in public interest to do so so in those cases the central government may by notification in the official gazette supersede the central board or such joint board as the case may be for such period not exceeding one year as may be specified in the notification so the central government can supersede now this is for a fixed period but once this is done on the expiration of the period of supersession specified in the notification the central government may extend it as well so it can be extended for a period not exceeding six months at a time but then it can be done again and again power of state government to supersede the state board so these are very similar provisions now power of central government to make rules the central government may simultaneously with the constitution of the central board make rules in respect of matters specified in subsection 2 and then this subsection 2 has a very long list and these include terms and conditions of service procedures fees payable and so on now every rule made by the central government under this act shall be laid as soon as may be after it is made before each house of parliament while it is in session for a total period of 30 days which may be comprised in one session or in two or more successive sessions and if before the expiry of the session immediately following the session or the successive sessions aforesaid both houses agree in making any modification in the rule or both houses agree that the rule should not be made the rule shall thereafter have effect only in such modified form or be of no effect as the case may be so however that any modification or annulment shall be without prejudice to the validity of anything previously done under that rule. So basically each rule has to be laid before the parliament and then the parliament has the final say. It can say that this rule should not be made or that the central government should make such alterations. And similarly the state government can also make rules such as the terms and conditions of service of the member, time and place of meetings of the board, fees and allowances to be paid manner in which and purposes for which persons may be associated with the state board up to things like form of an uh, form in which annual report has to be prepared form in which accounts of the state boards may be maintained and so on and so forth so basically the state government and the central government can make rules regarding this act so in short when we talk about the water act this is an act that was created when different states said that the central government should be making a law on this subject which the central government did not earlier have the power to make it and with that provision of the constitution this act was made now the primary purpose of this act is to ensure the cleanliness of the water bodies it is to ensure that pollution of water bodies does not happen and if there is any pollution then it is effectively controlled in a short period of time and the pollution is reduced to this end it makes different boards it gives them different functions it provides for the establishment and recognition of laboratories it provides for appointment of analysts it gives powers to enter into areas inspect areas collect samples and so on and it also uh, defines different offenses and it also prescribes punishments for them so we have seen before that this act has both substantive as well as procedural parts. So that's in short the Water Act and that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.